Today's tutorial is going to be threading footwork part two. Welcome back again ladies and gentlemen, I am AJ47 from Soul Mavericks Crew London, England. In this tutorial in particular, I'm going to be taking my time a little bit more explaining to you guys exactly what's going on. I've even slowed down some of the movements so you guys can actually see and I've got two angles for, for you guys. The first variation I have for you guys is the CC to jump over, jump back thread. Now the jump over, jump back I've taken from Storm's Footwork Fundamentals. The only thing that I've added or changed is by threading my foot as I come back towards the CC. In this clip here, you can see how I've slowed things down. Um, it really helps when you hold onto your foot. In fact, this is kind of helps with most of these threads that I'm doing in this tutorial, is when you hold onto your foot and pull your foot upwards, upwards into the air and then thread through, rather than jumping and threading downwards. You want to pull up and thread at the height of your jump. This will allow an easier and cleaner transition to the other side. This one I think is the easiest for me, so I've chosen to show you this one first. As you get a bit more confident with this one in particular, because it's very two-dimensional and it's at the front of footwork, it's really easy to engage your opponent or the audience that have been watching you. But therefore, make sure that you make eye contact with your opponent or the judges or who, or the crowd or whoever, or whatever the situation may be. Make sure your head is looking up confident and towards the audience rather than looking down at your trainers or kicks or sneakers or whatever you guys call them. We call them trainers here, but whatever you call them, wherever you're from. Second variation I have for you guys is the six step back thread change direction. Now the back thread is very similar to the one that we used in the first one. However, we're going to be changing direction and we're going to be doing it at the back of footwork. So our hand placement is going to be slightly different, but the actual thread itself is the same. So the same techniques apply. When you grab your foot from position three, you're pulling upwards and threading at the height of your jump. When your foot lands, you change direction. You can see in the slow down version here of exactly how to land and how to change directions. This is really fresh, really fun to do, and relatively easy, relatively. And the third and final thread I have for you guys, which is the most difficult to do, but I think as the most aesthetically pleasing thread is the swing across scoot back thread. This thread is a little tricky, you have to kind of lean on the outside of your foot to then make sure that you scoot backwards. Make sure that your knees are in line, don't try to thread your foot but thread your leg in the direction of the gap. As you can see in this thread it's a little bit tricky, in the slow down version you can see that I'm really having to twist and pivot on my feet to make the thread cleanly. This one's a little fiddly, it will take some time, it will take some practice, you'll scuff your ankle, you'll scuff your wrist at times with your heel but don't worry about it, you'll get over it. I'm using my fingertips for this one in contact with my heel, 
threading backwards. And that's why I call it the scoop back, because I'm scooting backwards as I thread. I really like this thread, it has a nice texture to it and a nice rocking uh, from side to side motion. Try mixing it with a six step, try mixing it out of many different, very, many different steps. Um, you don't even have to use it on both sides. You can use it on one side, transition into something else. These footwork threads are, are not set in stone. You can completely change them if you wish. You can add more, you can do double threads. Um, in fact, remember guys, not to break your threads. I mean, it's gonna happen at some point. I mean, everyone makes a mistake, um, but try to get them as clean as possible before using them in a competition or battle ready, because otherwise they will look messy and untidy and you want them to look clean, fresh, and, and yeah, sexy. I've had a lot of you guys add me up on Instagram and sending me footage of how you guys are progressing. Um, one guy was sending me his halos the other day and I was helping him with his halos on, on Instagram because you can send me direct videos. So if you want to do that and you need a little bit of extra help, I would love to see, in, in, especially for this uh, tutorial in particular, I'd love to see what you guys come up with. I'd love to see what you create or even if where you get stuck and I might be able to help. Um, just with a few pointers or whatever. But yeah, feel free to add me on Instagram. Uh, it's, AJ, it's at AJ47 Soul Measy. So yeah, hit me up and I will get back to you as soon as I can. A question I have for you guys, which one are you gonna to apply to your dance first? Thread one, two, or three? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope you found this tutorial helpful. I hope I've given you a lot of value and a lot of ideas of what you can create. If you are new, subscribe to the channel. I've got loads of content coming your way. Like the video, only if you like it, um, but it does help out the channel if you do so. So if you have time, smash the like button. I'd really appreciate it. And I'm gonna catch you guys on the next one. Probably, I'm probably gonna see you guys tomorrow. So anyway, peace. Um...